Now that D Machina has been out for a couple of days, and there don't appear to be many more balancing changes for the weapons and zombies, I thought it would be a good idea to break down how all six of the wonder weapons present on the map function. Several members of the zombies community have already made videos detailing their thoughts and opinions on the wonder weapons, but I haven't come across any videos which go in depth into the damage output and potential strategies these weapons could be used in. As such, that is the perspective I wish to bring to light in this video. The first wonder weapon I wish to discuss is the ray gun. This weapon has undergone several bouncing changes already in the game, but it seems to have leveled out at the time of recording this video. So to start out, let's look at damage. The ray gun deals two main types of damage to zombies. The first is explosive splash damage, which has a relatively small radius. When fully upgraded, the ray gun can deal up to 14,848 damage at the point of impact, and about 13,000 damage at the edge of its explosive damage radius. The second type of damage is awarded for hitting a zombie directly with a ray gun blast. This deals 8,000 damage, and is simply added to the explosive splash damage dealt to the zombie which is directly hit. In essence, a single shot fired from a fully upgraded ray gun can deal between 13,000 and 22,848 damage. Considering that the zombie health cap for high rounds is 30,000 health, the ray gun kills normal zombies in no greater than 3 shots. When used practically, the player can kill an entire horde of zombies in around half of a clip. Megaton boss enemies have 400,000 health at the health cap, so if they are hit directly by ray gun blasts, they will typically go down in less than 20 shots, which can be done fairly quickly. When paired with field upgrades like Ring of Fire, the ray gun can one-shot normal zombies at any round and take out the Megaton, the Blaster, and the Bomber all in only 12 shots. When it comes to raw damage output, the ray gun is practically unmatched. When fully upgraded, the ray gun comes equipped with 200 rounds, 40 in the mag, and 160 in reserve. Considering the ray gun's damage output, and the fact that the player can just buy ammo if they need to, this is more than enough for the player to reach a ridiculously high round. That is, if they can get it from the box and survive an onslaught of super spinners. The other 5 wonder weapons for this map are the die variants. Since each have the same suction ability when holding the left trigger, I figured this would be the best place to start. The suction ability will deal between 7 and 13% of a zombie's maximum health every one third of a second, where greater damage is dealt the closer the zombie is to the player. This means that every second, the suction ability will drain between 21% and 39% of a zombie's health. This ability can only affect 3 zombies at a time, as such it would take approximately a minute to kill one entire horde with just the suction ability by itself. As it applies to Megaton enemies, the suction drains between only 1 and 2% of the Megaton's health every third of a second. As such, it would take approximately 17 seconds to kill a Megaton enemy, assuming that the player is dealing the maximum damage with the suction ability. This isn't really a viable strategy, especially when you have to deal with other zombies in a round. But if the player is at the end of the round and only has to deal with the Megaton, it will be able to get the job done. However, the suction ability has a very important use. It refills the ammo of each die variant. Killing a zombie yields 3 ammo, and killing a Megaton Bomber or a Megaton Blaster yields 5 ammo for the weapon. This allows the player to continually use the right trigger abilities of each die without having to buy ammo all the time. The suction ability is not designed to kill zombies quickly. However, insta-kill power-ups and the Ring of Fire field upgrade allow the player to score lots of kills using the suction ability very quickly, while also filling up the ammo of their die variant. Since ammo is a limiting problem for the die variants, the ability to quickly recharge ammo is crucial for players who rely on using the die variants as their primary zombie killing weapons. The main ability of the die shockwave is that it fires a blast which deals 15,000 damage to approximately 10 to 12 zombies. This means that before approximately round 30, the player will be able to wipe out an entire horde of zombies with just two blasts. After round 30, the shockwave needs to fire four blasts in order to wipe out an entire horde. 
In the first couple of rounds, the Shockwave can also handle Megatons quite easily. But once the player reaches about round 15 or 20, the Shockwave really isn't the best weapon to be doing this with. Looking at the ammo situation, the Shockwave starts out with 60 ammo, but consumes 15 ammo with each blast. This means that it can only carry 4 blasts before needing to recharge or purchase more ammo. Looking at the Shockwave as a weapon in itself, it is a weapon which is very good prior to round 30 and is considerably more accessible than the ray gun. For high rounds and dealing with boss enemies, it is outclassed by many other weapons. That being said, pairing the Shockwave with Ring of Fire is actually a very useful strategy for high rounds, as its Shockwave Blast will insta-kill 10 to 12 zombies and the suction ability will be able to kill 3 zombies per second thanks to the huge damage boost provided by a fully upgraded Ring of Fire. Do other weapons work better with Ring of Fire for high rounds? Certainly, but the Shockwave can be easily obtained and consistently obtained every game, making it an ideal backup weapon when setting up. The Dai Thermophasic variant is similar to the Shockwave, except this one fires a projectile which deals 50,000 damage to only 5-6 to six zombies. This means that it will always insta-kill normal enemies, which is very nice. Unfortunately, it requires 4 blasts to kill an entire horde of zombies, regardless of the round. Much like the Shockwave, it can handle megatons very easily in the early rounds, but will start requiring multiple shots to kill past round 20 or so. It will kill a single megaton enemy in 8 shots in the high round, but there are multiple weapons which just do the job better, so it's not really recommended to use this weapon against those boss enemies. When it comes to ammo, the Thermophasic variant starts with 100 ammo and consumes 10 ammo with each blast. As such, it can fire 10 blasts when at full ammo. One of the main downsides to this weapon is that there is a delay from when the player pulls the trigger and when the blast is fired. Upon testing, I estimated this delay to be about 0.4 seconds, which is enough time to throw off a player's aim or cause the player to take considerable damage if they are unexpectedly cornered. All in all though, this weapon works pretty well as a get out of my way weapon. It can reliably insta kill zombies at any round and has decent ammo to boot. However, you need to keep in mind that this is not a thunder gun. It shouldn't be the weapon that players use to kill hordes of zombies, as that is simply not what it excels at. It also shouldn't be used as a weapon to kill megatons, as other weapons are far superior at doing so and consume considerably less ammo. One could argue that because the suction ability of the die variants works so well with Ring of Fire, the Thermophasic could be effectively used in the high rounds. They would be right, of course, but I think that there are just better weapons which can utilize Ring of Fire at high rounds, and so this weapon should really be allocated more to a secondary weapon used as kind of a safety weapon. The Nova 5 variant is very unique from the other die variants as it deploys a cloud of gas on the ground which damages zombies which walk through it. I found that the damage it deals is 1500 damage every one third of a second and can damage all the zombies that are present in the cloud. The cloud lasts for roughly 10 and a half seconds, so in theory, at a high round, one shot from this weapon could kill an entire horde in 6.6 .6 seconds. However, this of course assumes that all 24 zombies are within the gas for that entire period of time, which really is not likely to be the case. This weapon deals no additional damage to megatons, so it is absolutely not a weapon that a player would want to use for taking down these boss enemies. Much like the Thermophasic variant, the Nova 5 variant has an interesting downside. When the gas is fired at the ground, it takes a while for the cloud to develop and start damaging zombies. For training strategies this isn't a big deal, but for camping strategies this can be a bit difficult to work around. As for ammo, this weapon starts with 90 ammo and each shot uses 15 ammo. As such, with max ammo it can only fire 6 shots. From my experience, this weapon is most effectively used as follows. Firstly, the player trains up zombies into essentially a giant circle. Second, the player fires the Nova 5 variant at the zombies. And then step 3 would be the player just running around the cloud, trying to keep the zombies in the cloud for as long as possible. If executed flawlessly, it can wipe an entire horde. 
However, the strategy is much more difficult to pull off at higher rounds, as the zombies gain more health until they hit the health cap, and then the zombies start moving faster. In that case, you will usually deal at least 50% damage or more to the zombies. The interesting upside to only dealing about 50 or 60% damage to these zombies is that it allows the player to switch to a different weapon or use the suction ability to finish off the horde very quickly. This situation pairs very well with explosive weapons, like the ray gun or some of the launchers. So overall, the primary ability of the Nova 5 is definitely not the best. It is weak against boss enemies and cannot be used as kind of a get out of my way ability. However, it synergizes very well with powerful explosive weapons like the launchers and the ray gun when zombies are tightly trained up. It also synergizes well with its suction ability, which allows the Nova 5 to be continually used without running too low on ammo too frequently. The Cryo Emitter variant unleashes a beam of directed energy at zombies, which deals 2000 damage every tenth of a second and has a slowing effect on the zombies. It can only affect one zombie at a time, and slows the zombie down to roughly 10 to 20% movement speed. This variant excels before about round 20, as the energy beam can eradicate pretty much any zombies in its path. After round 20, the player needs to keep the beam focused on a zombie to ensure that the zombie actually dies. To kill a horde of zombies in the high round, it would take about 36 seconds, which is pretty unreasonable for a wonder weapon. Alongside this, the cryo emitter starts with 125 ammo and consumes roughly 10 ammo per second. It's plain to see that this weapon is not very effective outside the early rounds. What the cryo emitter does excel at, however, is helping the player handle megaton boss enemies. Focusing the beam onto them slows down their attacks and their movement speed, allowing the player to move to safety or swap to a high powered weapon and eliminate them very quickly. As a result, I feel like the cryo emitter is very good in the early rounds at killing regular zombies, but has a nice niche at high rounds in helping the player handle the boss enemies. Would it be better for the player just to use a second weapon which naturally deals a lot of damage to the megatons rather than using the cryo emitter? Maybe, but that's really up to the player. Similar to the cryo emitter, the electro bolt fires a beam of directed energy except this beam is made of electricity instead of freezing energy. The beam deals damage every tenth of a second, with its damage being determined by how long the beam has been fired for. If the beam has been fired for less than one and a half seconds, the weapon will only deal 1000 damage each tenth of a second. After this point, the beam ramps up to 3000 damage every tenth of a second. Finally, if the weapon has been fired for more than two and a half seconds, its damage ramps up a final time, dealing 7,500 damage every tenth of a second. It should be noted that again, the beam can only affect one zombie at a time. This means that at a maximum charge, the beam can kill a horde in about 10 seconds in high rounds. While not bad, it certainly isn't ideal. It also requires the player to be firing for a long period of time, which allows zombies to close in on the player. As a result, I would say that this weapon really is not the best for use at high rounds. On the other hand, it is actually pretty useful in the early rounds since the max charge will be able to insta-kill zombies for quite a long time. All this aside, the bread and butter for the Electro Bolt is dealing with boss enemies. Having a DPS of 75,000 damage per second basically deletes the Megaton, even at high rounds. The ammo count for this weapon is 400 and deletes at a rate of 10 ammo per second when not at max charge, but 15 ammo per second when at max charge. Running out of ammo really cripples the usefulness of this weapon, so using it as a dedicated megaton killer is extremely effective, since both the blaster and bomber almost always drop ammo packs. My final thoughts on the wonder weapons included on D-Machina are as follows. Firstly, the ray gun is always the best gun to have, it works super well in the early rounds, kills boss enemies very quickly, and kills quickly at the high rounds. Basically, this is the weapon that you're always trying to be getting out of the box. However, it can just be very difficult to get out of the box. The shockwave works well as a get out of my way weapon, as well as a horde wipe weapon in the early to mid rounds. 
Additionally, this weapon works very well with the Ring of Fire field upgrade at high rounds, and I would argue it works the best out of all of the die variants. The Thermophasic variant is always a very good get out of my way weapon, but really isn't that good at anything else. The Nova 5 variant is not particularly good on its own, but can be viably used to hoard wipe in the early, mid, and high rounds, especially when paired with explosive weapons, its suction ability, and or the Ring of Fire field upgrade. The Cryo Emitter is great for early round play and for handling the Megaton boss enemies. It isn't good at killing the boss enemies, but allows the player to position themselves so the boss enemies can be killed with other weapons very quickly and efficiently. Then finally, the Electro Bolt annihilates boss enemies and works well for early and mid round play. Its ability to decimate bosses makes it worth hanging on to into the late rounds. Those are my thoughts on the wonder weapons present on D Machina. If you found this video helpful or at the very least interesting, let me know by leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. I'm really enjoying playing this new iteration of zombies, so look out for more Cold War Zombies content here on my YouTube channel as well as my Twitch channel, which is linked in the description. Thanks for watching, you guys and have a good one.